Perimeter Anchors. Welcome to Building Knowledge 101. In this video, we will discuss correct use of perimeter anchors and share vital information for the proper installation of curtain wall systems. So because of all that movement, each curtain wall manufacturer you're working with is going to have anchors designed specifically for their system that accommodates building movement. So as an architect, you wanna make sure that the subcontractor that's installing your curtain wall system is following the installation instructions for the specific manufacturer they're using. Now, if your subcontractor used manufacturer A last week, and this week they're using manufacturer B, and then you question them about the installation instruction, they say, oh, don't worry about it. We did another curtain wall last week. If it's not the same system, you need to stop and say, I wanna see the installation instructions and make sure you're following it. Because again, every manufacturer has their own unique way that their system was tested. And if your subcontractor does not install the system in accordance with the manufacturer's installation instructions based on their test, then you could potentially have failures and the manufacturer might not be able to support the application if it was not done in accordance with their installation instructions. So here you can see on this side, here's the T anchor. This is what you use at the top and bottom of intermediate vertical curtain wall members. And it's designed to be hard fastened through these holes here to the surround condition. Then the vertical mullion drops down and free floats on top of that. So let me give you an example of what that anchor looks like. This is a very common type of an anchor for a curtain wall system. So you can see here's our T anchor and our fasteners are driving down now, anchoring that hard fastening down. So it is secured down. Our frame is being put together using shear blocks. You can see the shear blocks on the vertical and the horizontal on it. Now that assembly, it's going to be set down on top of the anchor and there'll be another anchor similar to that at the top. Now we're going to talk about shimming in just a moment so we won't concentrate on that here but that's what your typical curtain wall anchor looks like. Now there's a huge load from the wind being applied to those verticals transferred down to that anchor so that anchor is designed to withstand all the force of the wind being transferred through the verticals to it. So when you look at a situation like this you wonder oh my goodness how much of an end reaction can that hold? Now, I'm not sure what happened here, whether they ran out of room, they didn't order anchors, what happened? But the guys in the field to try to keep moving, they just grabbed some aluminum angle or whatever that is, drilled holes in it, and then tried to use that to secure the curtain wall into the elevation. That is not in any manufacturer's instructions. I dare anyone to try to find a manufacturer's instructions that show that type anchor, because when you think about the load, that's applied to that elevation, that system would not hold up long at all. So let me give you an example of that. So here's a curtain wall elevation. Our verticals are 25 foot tall. They're five foot on center and the wind load is 25 PSF. So when you calculate that, the end reaction at the top and bottom of each of the verticals is just over 1600 pounds. That's a lot of force. So when you think about that, you see something like this in the field, there's no possible way that that anchor could support that vertical when the wind starts to pick up. So getting the wind load correct, but also getting the system properly installed to the building is so critical. Here's something else to look at. I'm not sure what happened here, whether the slab was poured out of line or whether the curtain wall was not laid out correctly, but for some reason at the project side, the subcontractor ran into a situation where the curtain wall was hitting the slab of the second floor. So the solution they had was notch the curtain wall out and then take their wind load anchor and rotate it upside down and anchor it into the bottom of the slab instead of to the face of it as the curtain wall passed it. Now stop and think in building movement when people are loading onto that second floor and it starts to deflect, where is that slab going to go? It's sitting on top of the curtain wall. It doesn't have any room to move. So it's going to land on that curtain wall and start to twist it and break it then in and out movement. There's no movement for the curtain wall in and out. So curtain walls are constantly moving. We need to allow for that. That is all we have time for in this video. If you'd like to watch more of our 101 video series, subscribe to our YouTube channel, Conair Company, Inc.